Labor Day in the USA, the unofficial end of summer. It brings about visions of barbecues, lawn games, parades. Ever thought about how Labor Day came about? A man named Peter J. McGuire is considered the father of Labor Day, which he first proposed in 1882. Born in New York City in 1852 to a poor Irish family, McGuire had to quit school at age 11 to help support his family when his father went off to fight in the Union Army. At the age of 15, he became apprenticed to a piano maker, where he became active in labor and radical circles, including the New York branch of the International Workingmen's Association. While working various odd jobs, McGuire attended the free night classes at Cooper Union, a private college at Cooper Square in New York City, where he met future labor leader Samuel Gompers. Originally a social activist, McGuire began to see trade unions as indispensable to his socialist vision and to believe he should turn his energies to organizing and building a labor movement. In 1873, at the age of 21, he became a member of a body known as the Committee for Public Safety, which was agitating for unemployment benefits. Deeply involved in the campaign for the eight-hour day, McGuire became a member of the Greenback Labor Party after moving in 1878 to St. Louis, Missouri, where he continued to work as a carpenter and joined the Knights of Labor. He led a successful strike of carpenters in St. Louis for the eight-hour day. With the collapse of the Greenback Labor Party, he became more committed to unionism. As a member of the Knights of Labor who disagreed with some of the labor policies of the group, he supported the creation of a separate labor federation. He attended one of the preliminary meetings that led to the organization of the Federation of Organized Trades and Labor Unions in 1881. McGuire served as vice president of the Federation and its successor, the American Federation of Labor, or AFL, for most of the following two decades. In the same year, he helped organize the convention of various carpenters' unions that formed the United Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners of America. The following year, he moved the headquarters of the UBC to New York. At an 1882 meeting of the New York Central Labor Union, he introduced a resolution calling for workers to lead a festive parade through the streets of the city on the first Monday of September, a move that resulted in what we now know of as Labor Day. Peter J. McGuire was one of the most remarkable figures in the history of American labor movements. McGuire probably did more than anyone else to convince skeptical locally minded union activists around the country that a national labor federation was not only necessary, but was also possible.